In this video, we're gonna build this custom AI chatbot. You might ask, why do we have to create a custom AI when we already have ChatGPT, Bard, Claude, and others? Well, these are great general purpose AI chatbots that have been trained on the data found on the internet. If you ask them a general knowledge question, you'll get a decent answer based on the information it has seen before on the internet. But there is no way for them to answer a specific question about your business. Let's say for example, you have an e-commerce business. There is no way for ChatGPT or BART to help a customer on your e-commerce website track their order because that's a specific knowledge. Therefore, in this video, we'll also teach our AI to perform specific tasks based on our use case. By the end of this video, you'll be able to create your own personalized AI chatbot that you can teach it to perform a specific task. You can do this for your business or other businesses and start making money. We'll be using Google Gemini API, Node.js and AI Studio to create our chatbot. I'll show you how easy it is to build a custom AI chatbot with the power of Gemini AI. So without any further ado, let's get started. You can access Gemini API from two places, Google AI Studio and the Vertex AI. You'll need a Google account in both cases. If you'd like to access Gemini AI from Vertex AI, you'll need a Google account, Google Cloud account with billing enabled. If you're just getting started, I recommend trying out the API in the Google AI Studio. It's easier and when ready for fully managed enterprise AI platform, you'll be able to easily transition your AI Studio code to Vertex AI for additional customization and Google Cloud features. As a prerequisite, you'll need a Node.js version 18 or above. You can download it from nodejs.org and a code editor like Visual Studio Code. You can download it from code.visualstudio.com. They are free. Now that we have covered the prerequisites, let's jump into my computer and show you exactly step-by-step step how to use the Gemini API. The first thing we need to do is open Google AI Studio in the browser. That's uh, makersuite.google.com. When you log on to this page for the first time, you need to sign in with your Google account. If you don't have a Google account, you would need to create one. And once you sign in, you'll get into this interface. Google AI Studio is a browser-based IDE for prototyping with generative models. Google AI Studio lets you quickly try out models and experiment with different prompts. When you have built something you're happy with, you can export it to code in your preferred programming language. Google AI Studio provides several interfaces for prompts that are designed for different use cases such as freeform prompts, structure prompts, and chat prompts. We'll use chat prompts to build conversational experiences. The prompting technique allows for multiple input and response turns to generate output. Currently for chat, Gemini Pro model is available. I'm looking forward to Gemini Ultra model. As capabilities improve, these models are going to be able to do so much more and use files and data in multiple formats. Multiple modality is really going to change the way we interact with AIs. Temperature is the level of creativity. Uh, you can adjust the level of creativity that is allowed in the responses from here. Here we can add stop sequencing and we have safety uh, settings. We can adjust how likely you're to see responses that could be harmful. Content is blocked based on the probability that it is harmful. So if you would like to allow for dangerous content, for example, because maybe you want to make an AI chat bot for a game, you can adjust it or you can allow more dangerous content by setting it here. Um, I'm going to set it to the default settings and close this. To build a chat bot, you need to provide a custom knowledge context and examples of interaction between a user and a chat bot to guide the model to provide the responses you're looking for. To create a chat prompt, in the write your prompt example column of the prompt interface, you can start providing context and examples of interactions. I've already designed a prompt which I'm going to paste in this field. I've pasted the prompt that I designed and I'm going to 
explain this prompt in a little bit. First, I'm going to edit the title in the description. I'm going to call this coding money chatbot. Click save. Here, as you can see, I'm giving the AI chatbot a name and a persona and a specific job to perform. So here I'm writing, you're Sam, a friendly assistant who works for coding money. Coding Money is a website and a YouTube channel that teaches people how to code and make money online. Your job is to capture user's name and email address. Don't answer the user's question until they have provided you their name and email address. At that point, verify the email address is correct, thank the user, and output their name and email address in this format. Once you have captured user's name and email address, Answer users' questions related to coding money. Here I've provided information about the coding money website, social media channels, the uh, videos. And at the bottom, I've uh, mentioned to encourage users to check out our YouTube channel and follow us on social media. I can click on this button to generate an example. As you can see, the model has generated an example for us to see, and this is exactly what I want. If we want to provide more examples, we can do so in the user and the model fields. Here we can provide an example of what interactions between a user and your chatbot might look like. After you've filled out an example, start testing your application by chatting with the model on the right pane of the chat prompt interface. So if I type here, hi, I get hi there, thanks for reaching out. Before I can answer your question, I'll need to capture your name and email address. Can you provide that information? As you can see, this chatbot is following the instructions that we have provided here in the prompt example. We can teach our chatbot to chat better. Uh, by providing a single statement in response example, uh, we were able to build a basic AI chatbot. However, a single example is usually not enough to ensure consistency and quality in the model's responses. Without further input, the model's response to a question might be very long or it might sound like it comes out of a textbook um, uh, rather than a friendly assistant. So we can customize the tone of our chatbot by using the model response and editing it to match the desired tone and style of uh, our chatbot. We can click this button to add an edit example for the chatbot definition. Now we can edit the copied input in response to match the intended style and tone of our chatbot. Uh, so here I'm just going to edit this and I'm going to say um, thanks for reaching out to coding money. You can use this approach to add additional examples, ask more questions, edit the answers, and improve the quality of your chatbot. Continue to add examples and test how they modify the behavior of your chatbot. Typically, more examples correspond to higher quality chatbot responses. Under the hood, Google AI Studio constructs a prompt by combining dialogue examples and conversation history into a single block of text that's sent to the model. To see what the complete prompt looks like, click the preview at the bottom of the screen to bring up the preview pane. Note that because every message between the model and user is included in the prompt, this is conversational history. Conversational prompts can grow quite long as conversation goes on. Eventually, you may hit the model's token limit, the maximum length of text the model can accept. You can see the complete conversation in token count in the preview tab. As you can see, we are using 508 tokens out of the ter over 30,000 tokens we are allowed to use. Um, if you're not getting the desired output from the chatbot, you can also try adjusting the model parameters on the right side to see if they produce more appropriate results for your use case. After you have filled out an example, start testing your application by chatting with the model on the right pane of the chat prompt interface. Type in a question or observation that a user might make. For example, 
what's coding money as you can see it's following the instruction i've given in the chat context in the prompt examples now i can add more and more examples to make this better but it looks like it learned pretty much what i wanted from here one of the great things about google ai studio is that you can have it generate some sample code for you and you can click on uh, get code first let me save this and you can click on get code and you can select your preferred programming language. I'm going to select JavaScript. And as you can see, there are some installation instructions at the top. You need to make sure that your system has those installed. And then it's important some things from the generative AI um, library. Here, the model is specified. Configuring the application is going to go through the model, allow you also to set different safety settings. And then also send those examples to model for input. So if I want to, I can go ahead and copy this. It's been copied to the clipboard. You can also edit safety settings or some advanced settings right from here. And the code would reflect that as well. You can see that it allows you to handle some of these different safety settings right in the application. However, if you want to use this in your own application, you're going to need an API key for the project that you're working on. Get API key. And you can see here that I can create an API key in a new project or an existing project. I already have an API key that I created earlier. So I'm just going to use that for this project. If you create an API key, it's going to be a long string. You just copy it. And whenever you use the code it provided you, let's go back to get the code that it provided you. You're going to paste it where it says API key. You're going to paste that API key over here. Now I'll show you one more really interesting thing. So when I look at this code, it's given me here. I know that it's a basic code for a simple Node.js application. And what I really wanted to do is allow me to add a web interface to this Node.js application so that I can put it on my website and users will be able to interact with it. Now, thankfully, Gemini is actually a pretty good coder and we can ask Bard to help us rewrite this code. Let's go to Bard, bard.google.com. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and paste all the code over here. And at the very top, I'm going to add some instructions. I'll say, can you modify the code to add a web interface? This is a great way to get something like Jim and I help you with the code. As you can see, it has provided me the code and as well as instructions on how to set it up. I don't want the video to be very long. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and copy the code that Gemini provided me. I'll see if it works and then I will improve it and then share the final code with you guys so that you can uh, use it on your website or play with it. Gemini saved me some time by writing the code for me. The code it provided was good. It had a very small issue. It forgot to include the JSON middleware here, which I fixed and I've also improved it to make it look more attractive. I added uh, styling to the index uh, page and as well as um, added loader. Um, I've already created a GitHub repository for this code. You can uh, access it by going to github.com forward slash coding money forward slash coding dash money dash chatbot. I'll, I've included the uh, installation instruction and as well as I'll include the YouTube URL once it's uploaded. Let's take a look at the final product. Let's run the code and see it in action. Node server.js. Server uh, is running on port 3000. So I'm going to go to localhost. Let me start by saying hi. The loader is working fine says thanks for reaching out to coding money before i can answer your question i'll need to capture your name and email address can you please provide that information um my name is ahmad and email address is super underscore jabam and at yahoo.com it's gotta verify that email address because that's what i've asked it to do Thanks for providing your information, Ahmad, to verify. Is your email address super underscore Java man, name Ahmad, and email address 
Please confirm this information is correct. Once confirmed, I'll be happy to answer your question and provide you with more information about coding money. Also, don't forget to check out our YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash coding money for more in-depth tutorials and insights. We are also on social media, so be sure to follow us on uh, Facebook. Okay, so uh, it's, um, it's already started working for me. You know, the reason I'm outputting the name and email address in this format so that I I can extract the name and email address uh, from uh, the response and put it uh, in a database. Okay, I say, yes, it is correct. Now you see this is unlike uh, BARD or ChatGPT. You know, I can ask it specific questions about coding money. I cannot ask it other questions. We just covered business idea number three from my other video, which is called eight best AI businesses to start using Google Gemini. Check out the video if you haven't already. This specific video was requested in the comments section by one of my subscribers, Enrique Montero 74. I read all of the comments and I'd love to hear your thoughts. Feel free to share your ideas for upcoming videos. If you don't have any question or suggestion, you can support my work by just typing coding money in the comments. This really helps with the YouTube algorithms. If you found this video useful, a thumbs up would be highly appreciated. Stay tuned for exciting new videos. To ensure you don't miss out, please subscribe and hit the notification bell. Until next time, thank you for watching.